question it. Good morning. Everybody's got your journals. You should have today's date. Today. I think that students are their own best teachers and that the best thing that I can do is sharpen their ability to ask questions and look for their own answers. And it's something that I'm still always working on and, and you know, trying to get better at. So I would like to hear from four or five different people about what you see when you look at this painting. William. Man is tired from working in the field. Okay, so the man is tired from working in the field. And when you said he was tired, what in the painting made you feel like he was tired? Because he's leaning on the thing and he looks tired. Okay, so the position of his body makes him look tired to you? Yeah. Morel. In the background, I see mountains and smoke. Okay, in the background, you see mountains and smoke. That's something that you actually see. Erica. Um, he looks weary because, like, um, when somebody usually working outside, it's like heroic, and he just looks like tired and lonely because he's out there all by himself. That's such a good connection. In, in this lesson, students first, when they were looking at the painting, uh, I heard some things like the body position and the smoke in the back, background, the town is so far away, and um, you know the expression on the face, and they're looking at these very discreet things that make them feel like there's a certain mood or tone or feeling or idea in the painting. So there is a poet, Edward Markham, who actually wrote a poem about this painting, and that's the poem that we're going to analyze today. So we are going to use collaborative inquiry to analyze this poem, so somebody tell me what's the first thing we do in collaborative inquiry? Read and render. annotate or render. So what does that mean when we render the text? What does that mean? Right. 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 Yes, you're underlining, you're circling. What are you looking for the first time? Imagery. Imagery. Uh, Daniel, would you please read for us, The Man with the Hoe? The Man with a Hoe by Edward Markham. Bow by the way the centuries he leans upon his... Then when my students looked at the print text, the things they picked out were, were sometimes very discreet things. And I think that by starting with a non-print text, you, sort of, you, you activate their, their close reading, really, because I'm asking them first to look at very specific, discreet things visually, and then asking them to do the same thing in a print text. How would a future reckon with this man? Though there is certainly more writing and thinking to be done, let's pause for a moment and share uh, what our thoughts are. Uh, Shay, can you start us off? What's an image that you picked out? The first image I picked out was the first three lines. Um, Bowed by the weight of the century, he leans upon his hoe and gazes on the ground. Of course, it matches the um, painting we saw, but I also have a question. Um, it says, it's the thing the Lord God made and gave to have the demand of a sea and land. I want to just know when I'm asking anybody in here, um, does anybody know what the thing is? Because I see it's capitalized like it's something important. So we're going to hold answering that question. That's a great question. And when we share out in a seminar, that's definitely a question that we can investigate. So I teach students uh, the diff to evaluate questions, to differentiate between levels of questions, and then to generate those questions based on what their need is. Also, why did you pick out this? William gave me that idea, and he said that an ox works in the field, mm -hmm. and so he's in the field, so it's comparing the man and the ox. Mm -hmm. So now. When we think of an ox, what kind of animal is an ox? Like strong. 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 So it's not necessarily like a graceful, like beautiful animal. It's just like a hardworking, strong, kind of earthy. So when he makes that comparison there, now as you go through the end of the poem, because we've got maybe about another minute left, I want you to think about how these images might relate to that idea, right? that comparison. Okay. Okay. okay, scholars, please pause your questioning and your investigation just for a moment so that we can share and collect a common list of questions. Let's start with clarifying questions. Did anybody have a right there or a clarifying question that they had to ask? My name? It's about, say, when she talked about the thing, I think it's slavery. Okay, so a right there question is something that we can point to, right? Right there. So would that be a right there question? It would. What it kind of question would that be? It would be, um, think and search. That's a higher level question, yes. And when they're investigating it, when they're taking it apart, uh, they're activating all the different parts of their brains and really getting, getting into stuff. And I want them to feel like that. You know, I want them to be 
excited about asking tough questions. I want them to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> How is this poem related to Marxist criticism? Okay, why did you ask that question, Jitenwe? Because when it talks about the protest, which is also a prophecy, it sounds like they're going to rebel against the people who are richer than them. That's a great question. I think that in, in the academic world, it's important because that the more, the further they go, the more of that questioning they'll have to do on their own. The poem written for the picture, or was the picture drawn for the poem, like, or do they have any connection? So that's a right. I think it's also just about curiosity. You know, I want my students to be interested, and in not all of the things that we teach are interesting in their own right, but by developing their ability and interest in asking questions, uh, it opens the, the whole world to them. And we are going to spend some time uh, organizing our thoughts and preparing for a discussion. So which of these questions do you think are the most rigorous or the most challenging questions? Avery? Remember she asked about the how does the poem relate to Marxist criticism? Okay, yeah, that's a really great question. What is the significance of biblical allusions? Okay, so looking at the biblical allusions in all the different places in the poem. Turn and talk to your partner. Pick out a couple of important pieces of text from the poem that relate to some of the questions that you've asked and prepare yourself for a seminar. The way she like questions us, it challenges us because it makes us like, when we're writing something, it makes us open our minds to writing, reading, and analyzing stuff. Because we'll already be prepared for higher level questions in our mind that we'll be questioning the text already. All right, so we are going to begin the seminar. I'm going to remind you that some of the thematic questions invite us to talk about things outside of the text, which is okay, but we want to always make sure we have text. We relate back to the text. Alex? The question is, uh, how does his thoughts and feelings relate to his freedom? I think that, like in the, in the poem, it say, to whom's breath blew out the light within his brain. What's that? It's in the first stanza at the first end. First stanza is the last. Can you read it for us again, please? It says, to whom's breath blew out the light within his brain, within this brain. So I feel like he's saying, like, if he doesn't feel like he's thinking or is educated, then He's like a slave to whoever is more educated or has more knowledge than he does. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Because, like, just looking at it, saying whose breath blew out the light within his brain, they're saying, like, they blew out the educational knowledge of this man because they're thinking he, well, he could be a slave. So, yeah, I agree with you. With the burden on his back, he, he understands that it's so, he's so far away from his life goal that he was when he first started. It's like he didn't put himself on the other side. He was on the ship in the middle of the, in the, middle of the water and he thought he was selling one way and then realized he sailed to the wrong shore.